Welcome back everyone to Finnegan's Farm uh, Welcome back to the YouTube channel So if you like these videos don't forget to subscribe and share them uh, We had a few inquiries regarding where the Brussels plant comes from The Brussels sprout plant comes from So today we're off to uh, up to County Down to visit John, Gabby and Son They are what they call uh, plant propagators where they grow the plant from a seed So in the case of what we have here we have this plant here This actually is formed from a seed so we're, we're off to County Down now and the next time you'll see us we will be up at his place, we'll probably talk to Trevor Trevor will go through the whole process where it comes from seed to plant and uh, we'll talk to you then and by the way, we have just got our new cutting side of trailer here um, it's uh, Finnegan's Farm, it's farming food for future generations and that's a little bit of what we're all about so we're delighted to get it, it it's, hasn't just made its first journey yet but it arrived here on the farm this morning so we'll talk to you in a while so today we've made the visit up to Cumber to talk to Trevor Gabby here from John Gabby and Sons. Um, he's going to explain to us a little bit about the, where the plant seed came from, the Brussels sprout uh, seed came from. We're here with Fitz the dog. He's been uh, very hospitable, I have to say. And uh, right, Trevor, so look at, I suppose we get this started. Um, yeah, it's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of stuff going on. Um, sprouts are nearly all the way. Um, there's a few left for, your, for yourselves to go. Uh, you're down here just looking at the minute winter cauliflowers, those are alpine. Those are January, end of December, January cauliflower. So this is actually the third crop of plants through here. So your sprouts nearly all the way, uh, about uh, a number of weeks ago. Uh, we're going to start refilling this house again. Um, this coming week of about 16,000 trays or so. So this is more than this house filled uh, with trays again. Um, and we have to have so we do a program out for so certain things at certain times. Um, these here have to be these will be ready. This is the twenty eighth of uh, May. These will be ready in a month. Okay, to make to get the foliage up to for the for winter. So, so what's going on here in this house? There's obviously a lot of different pipes and heat and. Humidity well, and doors and windows opening and closing here. There's a lot going on. A lot going on. This the this house is built in uh, 2000. Um, it has a private com environmental computer which controls the vents. So if the humidity rises, the house will vent higher, or vent at a lower temperature, um, and also try to keep a constant temperature. Uh, also, if it gets very windy, the vents will pull down, so there's no damage. Also, if it rains, the vent will pull down to a certain level as well, a certain set level. Again, if you go into a storm, the vent actually will open slightly, so a vacuum's not created. So the, it's a must, environmental computer is a must in a glass house. Other than that there, you might see it again. Um, the irrigation is done with uh, these booms, travel down uh, with the injector on for feed. So they travel down. This bay, this bay holds uh, approximately 600,000 plants in, in one go. Okay, so this house here would hold about 4.2 million in this house alone. And we see that you also have some tunnels there, but obviously glass is the way forward with all this. Um, that polythene house was built rather quickly. Um, it would be half the price of a glass house, uh, but the glass house is much more superior. It's not bad. But the glass is up here. We're actually got foundations in for another house to get built in August, uh, creating another nearly three million plant production space. We're just a wee bit this year. Um, there's increased number of plants growing because I think Brexit and things like that. There less less imports coming in, so the, we have been just more plants. So we need a wee bit. More. And the many different varieties or many different plants would you be? Probably. You know, we we'll grow cauliflowers, Brussels sprouts, pointy cabbage, red cabbage, winter cabbage, um, Savoy cabbage, we we'll grow kohlrabi, we we'll grow celery, celeriac, beetroot, thyme, pumpkins, pumpkins mm. courgettes, leeks, onions. We nearly grow it. It's, if you need it, we probably need to grow it. But don't grow tomatoes because that's a different ball game altogether. Yeah. Well, listen, we might uh, go in to see how they're actually put into the trays. You did show us already, but yeah, we'll just have, okay. have another look and, and uh, 
see how the seed actually gets into the little module and that. So no problem. It's uh, quite interesting now, the whole setup. It's a fine setup and uh, fair play to Trevor now for giving us a great service. And my, my good lady. And I'm your good lady. Friend. She's over there, but she's, she's in the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's, she's the real boss there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anytime we, we rang Trevor, plants are down, never an issue. Always in time, and uh, it's great to have a service like that. But I mean, it's, it's very impressive when you look across the, the whole uh, glass house to see everything so pristine and so level and just immaculate, really, is probably the word you, you could probably use. Uh, look, I should put the plate on, just magazine, basically, and she will keep the seeding, the denest or the stacker, she'll keep the stacking them up, okay? And then when that is empty, another stack will come forward. Okay. Uh, we'll wait, that'll take forever. Yeah. The trays then go into the tray filler. And it's getting, it's getting supplied pink from this. And we put very large bales of mega bale in, 4 cubic meters of compost. And she will break that up. Okay. So you have nice, fluffy compost going into your trays. You have a very little look for it. Um, she's filling the trays. And they're nice and firm, nice and even. Now, these trays are just recently washed, so they're going to keep more sticking them because the trays are wet. Okay. Then move over to the tray dipper. She puts a small dip hole in the center of each tray. And Patricia's looking after the cedar. And we are showing uh, Spinel Savoy. And each. So, you need to look clearly. There's a seed in each cell. Okay. Go through the cover unit and a small bit of uh, paint will go on. Trace coming through the covering unit, paint goes on, and then a brushing unit brushes any excess off. Uh, if we get too much paint on, we'll get cross root and not make uh, very angry guys who plant because the roots are all stuck together. And then we put a wee drop of water, just water, on just to create the moist. We don't, we don't want wet, we just want moist. Okay, uh, then she hasn't long enough to this corner unit then drive in this way, your direction. And then we have Damien there stacking. There's part of this, the tray stacker. So then Damien's lifting sixes for whatever you want at a time. You can set it for two, you can set it for three, you can for whatever. So we're lifting sixes. So, uh, and that's it basically. You see like, in the base, you just pull them, pull them out of the different modules and they place them down. You place them into the carousel there. This is Carl here, he's on the video here, this morning away. Four people, the carousel has been, plants drop down, and we plant them. Down. And is everything propagated in so inside? Everything's, everything's gone inside, but then it's moved maybe if we run out of space, or some products need we bit of outside time. Yeah. If we've time to move. Generally gets sometimes every year there's always one variety that doesn't do as well. Yeah. You know? Um, but sprout leaks wouldn't be generally as good as what you know, if you got your ninety percent on a leak you're doing really, really well okay. during nation. You know, where a broccoli or something like that that if you get ninety nine percent more you know? popular. The one that maybe you taught maybe initially pumpkins have gone bonkers yeah. this year, really no. But we've got a lot of new business. Um, with pumpkins from Armagh to Wexford to Lusk, Straban, uh, Straban you know, um, we're doing quite a few. Um, pumpkins, courgettes, really couldn't tell the difference between them two and look very, very similar as a plant. Um, that's pak choy. Pak choy would be quite popular too, wouldn't it? That's lovely. That's so lovely. we're now here at the lagoon there for the fresh water supply. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about this. Uh, Basically, this is taking roof water off the glass houses um, and the new Paul thing house. 
Um, yeah, this will just reduce our water bill dramatically. And uh, also give us, one of my friends said, it gives you water safety. That you have, if the mains water is turned off for a day, you're stuffed. So uh, even last year, we didn't have it full to start off the year. We still got through uh, with the water. Um, but this, you maybe can't see it, but it has only dropped. It's dropped about two, two, three feet for the full year. How deep is that? Uh, this would be probably the minute they're still over 10 foot deep. It's pretty deep. I would say it's maybe more than 10 12 feet deep. When it's empty, it's fairly big. Um, but now we would still go through a lot of water in the day. You know, and when you're starting, hopefully, if the weather picks up, you really will see them. You know, you can see it dropping every day. And after a week, you go, oh, a lot of water's running. Um, washing trays as well. Use a lot of water washing trays. You have a lot of roof space, like you have a lot of. Um, well, we're not that big. We've got um, it's about three and a quarter acres of roof space going into this. Okay. Okay, and then it, then it is um, it's filtered and it's UV'd uh, and then into the uh, holding tank, you know, um, and later stage, hopefully, um, if COVID goes away, we'll um, chlorinate oxide, chlorine dioxide in the water, all right, to further sterilise it. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff.